Live, late breaking, investigative. Right now on CBS 5 News. Late breaking news for you right now. A situation forming in the valley that needs a lot of definitive answers immediately. News Hawk 5 live with these pictures of drivers rolling up to gas stations, lining up after hearing reports of a possible new gas pipeline rupture in Tucson. CBS 5 News is contacting agencies statewide which say the report of a pipeline break is not true. Drivers are apparently worrying and lining up at the pumps like these in the West Valley. And we here at CBS 5 News have been flooded with calls. Now tonight, all the agencies we have contacted say this scare was triggered by some sort of rumor and completely untrue. Now the following agencies say there is no problem at all. Kinder Morgan, the pipeline owner, the Arizona Governor's Office, the Arizona Corporation Commission, and the Department of Environmental Quality. Tonight, the Governor's Office says the rumor may have begun with a police agency airing rumors of a pipeline problem over police scanner frequency. So to make this clear one more time, the state says there is no rupture. But worried drivers nonetheless appear to be worrying anyway. CBS 5 News reporter Jason Barry live at one Phoenix gas station with more on this late breaking story. What can you tell us, Jason? Take a look at what's going on out here. Dozens and dozens of cars lined up for gas for no reason. There is no gas shortage. There is no gas crisis. But obviously, these drivers don't know it. We are going to try and fill them in momentarily. But first, we want to tell you what's going on. A spokesperson for the governor's office tells CBS 5 News that a rumor was going around late this afternoon that a gas pipeline to Tucson had burst and we were about to have another gas shortage in the valley like the one we had this past summer. The answer, no. The rumors are wrong. There is no gas shortage. We are told that a rumor started late this afternoon. Apparently, a police agency apparently was talking on a radio frequency to another police agency. They mentioned a possible gas shortage. Apparently, people were listening on their scanners. They heard what was going on, and that is how this entire mess started. People heard there may be a shortage. They started lining up. And you can imagine they are not going to be too thrilled of the fact that they've been waiting in line for no reason. But I think they'll be happy to hear that there is no gas shortage. Reporting live in the North Valley, Jason Berry, CBS 5 News. All right, Jason, once again, we are being told by the state's top agencies there is no pipeline rupture, there is no shortage, and no need to go to the pumps tonight. You can certainly depend on us to keep you posted on any late-breaking developments here. More late-breaking news for you now. News Hawk 5 over the scene within the past hour. Inmates hauled from their cells laying on the ground outside a Southwest Valley prison. That after reports of unrest of fires set inside the building and a guard apparently injured in a prison disturbance. Now, all this is happening right now at the state-run Lewis Prison. That is in Buckeye. Look at that map right there. CBS 5 News reporter Shelby Croft is there live with the late-breaking details on this story. Shelby. Diana, we've had no official word from the prison yet, but I can tell you what we've seen and heard out here tonight. Apparently, there were two fires in the Buckley unit. Those two fires have since been uh, been put out. Some sort of disturbance in the Buckley unit tonight. Now, Newshawk 5 was over the scene as the prisoners were emptied out of that unit. They all were forced to lay on the ground outside. No word yet on any, any injuries, but we did see a prison employee taken away in an ambulance. We don't know exactly what caused this disturbance here at the prison tonight. We don't know if this was a riot, an uprising of some sort. Can tell you a little bit about the unit where it happened, the Buckley unit. It houses 775 inmates. It is what's known as a level four unit that is just below a level five or the highest or maximum security unit out here on these grounds. We'll, of course, stay on top of the story and bring you any late breaking developments. Reporting live in Buckeye, Shelby Croft, CBS 5 News. New information in the murder of a Northwest Valley couple in their home. Tonight, the family of the man accused in this crime is talking to CBS 5 News. Handyman Benjamin Coda is facing two first degree murder charges and his brothers defend him as more disturbing details in this crime come to light. CBS 5 News reporter Kara Lou has his Crime Tracker 5 update. I say he'll take your wallet, but he won't kill you. Benjamin Coda's brother saw him an hour and a half before he was arrested. They can't believe he suspected of murdering a Peoria couple he was doing construction for. He didn't act like nothing was wrong, and you know, and he was here yesterday, he took a shower, and he left. Newshawk 5 was over Tolleson Tuesday as Coda tried to run from police after slamming the victim's truck into a wall. So I, was, I was surprised because he, like I said, you know, he was not a violent person. So to this point, I still think that he did, he did not do it. 
investigators say otherwise, that Benjamin Cota murdered Victor Martinez and Lupe Zavala as they slept, that the mattress is blood-soaked, and the bodies were found wrapped in plastic in a bedroom closet. William Carlson has known Victor Martinez for nearly 40 years. Oh, you couldn't ask for a better person as well as Victor. Always had cash on him. Help right now. If he was there, I won the $100 bill. Give it to me. Friends say Martinez routinely took in workers down on their luck, giving them jobs fixing up the house. And he let them stay in the house, too. Grieving family members brought candles and flowers to the home, but were too distraught to say much, except that they did not deserve this. In Peoria, Carol Lee, CBS 5 News. CBS 5 News investigating the rape allegations made against Kansas State University quarterback L. Roberson just one day before he played in the Fiesta Bowl here in the Valley. The alleged victim told Paradise Valley Police she first had consensual sex with another player on the team, James McGill. She says McGill left the room and then she fell asleep and, and then awoke to Roberson having sex with her. She tells police she told him no and wait. Roberson says the two had consensual sex. The county attorney is still reviewing the case, but says it is not likely Roberson will be charged with a crime in this case. CBS 5 News waiting to hear word as to whether or not the trial of Bishop Thomas O'Brien will be moved out of Maricopa County. O'Brien is set to stand trial starting Monday. He's charged with leaving the scene of a deadly accident last June. Attorneys today discussed several last-minute motions, including a change of venue. You can certainly depend on CBS 5 News to be there when the hearing continues tomorrow. And saving you money on prescription drugs. That's the goal of a new copper card program from the governor today to help Arizona seniors and the mentally and physically challenged here in the state. Here's what's new. The copper card will give those on Medicare 15 to 55 percent discounts at 500 pharmacies across the state. All prescription drugs are included. There won't be an enrollment fee, but there will be a $3 dispensing fee for each prescription to help cover administrative costs. The new cards will be mailed out during the next several weeks. New tonight, a Valley grade schooler is on her way to California to see the headquarters for the Mars mission firsthand. Now, why does she deserve this trip? Well, she named the two spacecraft used in this mission. We have been bringing you these amazing shots from the Mars rover that landed Saturday, full color images and 3D photographs of the red planet, all part of a mission to see if life ever existed on Mars. And 10-year-old Sophie Collis is one of the mission's biggest fans. The Scotso girl, who was adopted from Russia, named the rover Spirit and Opportunity after winning a nationwide essay contest sponsored by NASA. And tonight, she shared part of that essay with CBS 5 News. Listen up. I used to live in the orphanage. It was dark and cold and lonely. At night, I used to look up in the sparkly sky, and I felt better. <clears throat> I dreamed I can fly there. In America, I can make all my dreams come true. Thank you for the spirit and the opportunity. Oh, that's great. Well, Sophie heads to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena this weekend, and she tells us tonight she wants to be an astronaut when she grows up. How about that? All right, we're still covering that rumor, at least, of a gas shortage in the valley that has motorists lining up at West Valley gas stations we've seen already. We want to take you now to Janine LeCure. She's the governor's spokesperson. Janine, can you hear me? I sure can, John. All right, Janine, we, uh, we hear viewers and others calling us tell us that uh, people heard rumors out of Tucson law enforcement, somebody may be monitoring scanners, mm -hmm that there might be a gas line break. How does the governor's office find out whether or not such a rumor is true, first of all? Well, first of all, the, by happenstance, we happen to have all five corporation commissioners, commissioners and representatives of Kinder Morgan meeting in Tucson tonight. They had uh, access to information instantly, and so we were able, through the governor's office, to confirm very quickly that this is nothing more than a rumor. You can gas categorically is flowing, deny there is no gas line break. You can categorically deny, based, based on what you've been told from the Corporation Commission and the company itself, that there is no such gas line break. Yep, this is a rumor. And how could you pinpoint it? This is Diana. How could you pinpoint it to rumors spread through a scanner? Well, that's one of the things that we're investigating now. And the, the piece of information that we have is sometime mid-afternoon, word got out and people began talking to each other and telling each other about this. As near as we can tell, that word got out over a scanner from a police agency, information that they were suggesting to their own officers to top off. 
Now, what triggered that police agency to put that piece of information out over their radio systems? That's what we want to know. And that's what we'll be checking into in the next day or so. But it's real important for folks to know tonight that this really is a rumor, that gas is flowing, there is no shortage, and nothing to, nothing to, nothing to worry about. It's a concern simply because we all lived through this last summer. Janine LeCure, thanks for that uh, clarification, that explanation. Uh, bad news travels fast. This is unsubstantiated news, a rumor, and it's simply not true. We have it straight from the governor's office. Thanks for uh, filling us in tonight, Janine LeCure. My pleasure. Coming up next on CBS 5 News. One Valley City doesn't deliver for thousands of people left waiting in line on New Year's Eve. Now, angry ticket holders claim they're getting a refund runaround. I'm frustrated and I feel ripped off. I mean, I lost $90 in this. The 5i team following the money in an exclusive investigation just ahead. The future of the Arizona Cardinals is apparently all green. Dennis Green takes the deal to take over the team. Well, you got through hump day. Now get ready for a few warm days. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Carvey. I'll let you know how much we'll be heating up ahead in our Weather Watch 5 forecast. Live. Late breaking investigative with Diana Sullivan and John Dupree. This is CBS 5 News. The Super Bowl on CBS 5 approaches. We have a live interview with Joe Theismann and John Riggins. Who do they think will be in the big game? Plus, at 610, a battle over Valley expansion turns nasty. It's growth versus the Grove. That's tomorrow morning on CBS 5 News. When CBS 5 News is live on the scene, we're there for a reason. CBS 5 News is live on the scene. The children were found right behind this fence. There's no better and more reliable place to gather information about a story than where the action is unfolding. I'm live in the exact spot where it all took place. That's why you'll see us live all over the valley, in the air, on the ground, bringing you new, urgent information the second it becomes available. Live, late-breaking, investigative, CBS 5 News. great for our family. Your mornings are busy. Choose a newscast that respects your time. Comprehensive coverage of the Valley's major news and breaking overnight developments from across the country and around the world. Plus complete weather and traffic reports around the clock. Join Christina Wofford, Ted Coffey, and Jeff Kelly weekday mornings from 4.30 to 7 a.m. for live, late-breaking investigative coverage. It's time to choose CBS 5 News. Live, late-breaking, investigative. You're watching CBS 5 News. Rumors run rampant in the Valley tonight. CBS 5 News checking reports of a gas rupture and a pipeline break and going straight to the authoritative source to find out they are not true. That according to the governor's office itself. We'll have more as the story progresses. Now, an investigation you will only see on five, a spectacular sunset over the valley, made more beautiful by the dirt and pollution in the air. But is there more danger that we cannot see? Federal agencies tracking terror believe there may be more to it, only on CBS 5 News tonight. An investigation into how the Department of Homeland Security is screening the air for signs of terrorist activity. CBS 5 News reporter Greg Mocker live with that story tonight. Greg. John, this is one area of Phoenix where the county and the state have an air monitoring system. But today, you could judge with your own eyes. A rising level of pollution created a murky mist above us all. But it is not only pollution that is sparking concern and interest in the skies over the valley and the nation. Tonight starts in style. Because of the weather, it's wonderful. But you're in for some dull days under the brown cloud. It was just very hazy, and I said it must be a high pollution day. Yeah. Yucky. Being a golfer, when you hit the ball into this air, you lose it, and that's the truth. From Newshawk 5, see the extra blanket over the valley. Yes, Camelback Mountain is still there. Some new eyes are actually watching valley air. A series of cameras positioned by the Arizona Environmental Quality Department started snapping pictures around the valley and posting them on the web last month. This is from South Mountain this afternoon. Also, the state and the federal government have just brought online a national air toxic trend site in Phoenix, enhanced monitoring for pollutants, pesticides, and other toxic elements. And in 31 major cities, including New York, D.C., Houston, San Diego, and San Francisco, U.S. Homeland Security is testing BioWatch, 
a germ and biological warfare detection system. But for security reasons, no one will confirm or deny that the valley is also a site for that. More than a dozen sites are constantly raiding valley air, checking for everything from chemicals, dust, soot, and pollution from vehicles. And that is what is in that brown cloud that you saw this morning and might see tomorrow morning, hanging around in part because of these colder nighttime temperatures and light winds. In Phoenix, Greg Mocker, CBS 5 News. Well, thousands build the first ever Scottsdale New Year's Eve party, a rousing success. But one week later, those who never made it through the gates because of those long lines are still suffering from a New Year's hangover. Hundreds of dissatisfied customers say they are getting the refund runaround. That's right, and CBS 5 News is working to track the money. The 5i team's Mark Lodato has tonight's exclusive investigation. For thousands, Scottsdale's ultimate New Year's Eve block party lived up to every expectation. Loud music, plenty of alcohol, and an adults-only celebration. Yeah, this is a joke. But thousands of other ticket holders could only hear the fun from outside the gates. Instead, forced to spend 90 minutes or more of New Year's Eve standing in line as the clock counted down to midnight. Yeah, we've already paid for them and we're stuck here. Organizers say online ticket sales forced a backlog at will call. That, combined with an avalanche of arrivals between 8.30 and 9.30 and cumbersome ID checks at the gates, resulted in this pledge from sponsor Brian Rorick the very next day. And anybody that's unhappy or that, that they had to wait in, in line and they feel that they were taken advantage of or that they decided to go to another establishment, uh, we are offering a refund. Now, one week later, it's become clear to the 5i team it's not as simple as Brian Rorick would lead you to believe. I'm frustrated and I feel ripped off. I mean, I lost $90 in this. Kelly Linkus was one of the thousands who bought her block party tickets online at TicketWeb. But when the line at Will Call seemed like it wasn't going to budge, her group, like hundreds of others, bailed, heading elsewhere to ring in the new year. I'm trying to go through those channels that you're supposed to go through, and I still haven't gotten a refund, and I'm being told different things by different people. So is the 5i team. We've heard from several disgruntled ticket purchasers who've received only this, an apologetic email from TicketWeb acknowledging their request for a refund. But that's still more than they got from Open Air Events, the corporation established by the four sponsoring clubs, Dos Gringos, Acme Bar and Grill, Next, and Noise. When first contacted by the 5i team, event organizers told us that anyone with their original ticket still intact would be eligible for a refund, a plan they'd be happy to explain to us on camera. But just 60 minutes later, open air events changed their story, insisting they weren't guaranteeing any refunds, and they canceled our interview. And the mixed messages continue from San Francisco based TicketWeb, where the chief operating officer told the 5i team by email, only customers not admitted to the event will be issued refunds. When asked what that means for the hundreds like Kelly, who left before picking up their tickets from Will Call, Dan Turee didn't respond. An apology is nice, but it doesn't replace money. And it is certainly quieter out here tonight. Now, the city of Scottsdale says it, too, has concerns over the access issues. And it tells the 5i team if this group wants to hold a block party again next year, they'll have to address those concerns before any permits will be issued. Meanwhile, there are a couple encouraging events to discuss. One patron tells us he did, in fact, receive his refund. And since our calls, TicketWeb has added a special link for those with problems regarding the Scottsdale party. We'll show you that link. All you have to do is go to our website at kpho.com. Of course, we'll keep you updated to date on the story for now with the 5i team, Mark Lodato, CBS 5 News. Well, low-level panic in the valley, but panic nonetheless as rumors swirl about a possible gas pipeline break similar to that which caused that gas shortage over the summer. And as we've shown you, the lines of cars and trucks have been stacking up at gas stations around the valley. There you see another example in Phoenix. We continue to monitor this story for you tonight. Yes, with us on the phone right now, we have Ann Johns with Kinder Morgan, the owner of the pipeline. And now rumors of a broken pipeline in Tucson creating a huge panic right now. Give us your take on the situation right now. And also maybe you can calm some fears out there as well. Yes. We would like to calm the fears. Kinder Morgan wants everyone to know that the inventory is above normal levels right now. The Arizona Corporation Commission has confirmed that this is a rumor. There is no leak in the pipeline, and there is no impact on the supply of gasoline to the valley. And, and we want 
Pardon me, but have you been able to find out in any way, shape, or form how these rumors got started and where they came from? No, we have not confirmed where the rumors have came from. I would imagine this would create quite a panic in your company. Well, we're not in a panic situation because we have plenty of supply for the Valley cars. Um, and I'd like to point out also that the last time this situation happened, there was 90% of the gas delivered to the Valley and it was really people worrying, panicking, trying to get to the gas station. The supply is fine. Kinder Morgan wants everyone to know there's plenty of gas for the valley. And also to reiterate this as well, there is no break, there is no leak, there is no crack, there is anything of that sort. Nope. There is nothing happening along the line. The line is working perfectly and there's plenty of gas. We're above inventory on the supply. All right, Ann Johns with Kinder Morgan, obviously the owner of the pipeline that we're talking about right here. Thank you. All right, now, Chief Meteorologist Mike Harvey with your exclusive Weather Watch 5 forecast. Cloudy skies across the valley today, but that is already beginning to change. Let's take it outside. News Hawk 5 with a beautiful shot over the West Valley. Clear skies already making it into Arizona and across the valley. Right now, our current temperature in Phoenix, 58 degrees. Scottsdale, a bit cooler at 52 and 54 in Mesa. Our high temperature today in the valley, 68 degrees. Relative humidity at 28%, dew point 25 degrees, and barometric pressure at 30.14, and it is rising. Well, high pressure is going to build and move into the valley. You can already see the clear skies developing over Nevada and the northwestern portion of the state. That is going to move across the state as we move into tomorrow morning. High pressure moving just to the north of Arizona will clear everything out. Thursday at 8 a.m. tomorrow afternoon, we'll have clear skies and warmer temperatures than we saw today, and in a couple days, some very warm temperatures. Tomorrow morning, we'll be in the 20s for Flagstaff, Winslow, and Sholo. But look at these highs for tomorrow. Southern third of the state will be in the 70s. Lake Havasu at 70, Yuma at 72 degrees. As far as the valley is concerned, a mild start at 47 degrees. Your high temperature, 73 degrees. Our normal high for this time of year, 66 degrees. We'll be well above that tomorrow. And take a look at this as we head into Friday and Saturday. Much warmer, 76 on Friday, 77 on Saturday. And as we move into the latter part of the weekend, yep, it's a rock and roll marathon. Kicks off in the morning about 730. Your morning temperatures in the low 50s. We'll have a high temperature on Sunday of 74 degrees. Beautiful running weather. Beautiful indeed. Yes, it will be. We brought you the breaking details at 5. The Arizona Cardinals hire a new coach. Sports director Chris Caraggio is up next with the full story. Stay right there. CBS 5 News wants to help crack down on streets of speed. Report the lead puts in your neighborhood by visiting kpho.com or by calling 602-650-5432. Tomorrow at 10, high-tech counterfeiters have a new way to drain your bank account. Whether you're selling something on eBay, on classified ads, or on your own, learn what to watch for tomorrow on CBS 5 News at 10. Thursday at 10, a hair in your salad, expired meat. Going out to eat can be an unhealthy experience if your favorite restaurant doesn't keep a clean kitchen. CBS 5 News reveals some of the best and worst Valley restaurants. Dirty Dining, Thursday on CBS 5 News at 10. Serta Mattress Blowout. Well, the Cardinals have their man, and it's the man most of the NFL team searching for a head coach wanted. But Dennis Green chose Arizona. Today, he and the Big Red worked out a five-year contract worth a reported 11 million bucks. Green interviewed twice with the Cardinals, once last week and then again yesterday. In his 10 years as the Vikings head coach, Minnesota made the postseason eight times, so he knows how to win, and he knows how to discipline his players. The last two years, Green was an ESPN analyst. He takes over for Dave McGinnis, who was fired nine days ago and becomes the 33rd head coach in franchise history. A news conference is scheduled for Friday in Tempe. The Suns played in Milwaukee tonight. The new guys were in uniform. It was the debut for Antonio McDyson, Howard Isley, and they didn't play all that well. Let's uh, show you what uh, McDyce did. Shot the ball six times, made him twice. That was inside, and here is outside. He finished with four points. As for Isley, well, he was just one of nine from the floor, and this is the one. A little 10 foot J from the baseline. Michael Red played great conversely for uh, for Milwaukee. Look at him going coast to coast right here. Your final 95 to 87. The Suns lose with McDice and Isley. How about the Coyotes? They are on fire because of that guy, the goalie right there, Brian Boucher. More on him in just a second. First, how about Shane Doan? 
It was one nothing Coyotes right there. That was all that Boucher needed. He sets history tonight. Four consecutive shutouts. That is a second in the, the modern era right now. So he goes for five in a row. Three nothing was your final. He goes wow. for five in a row Friday in Minnesota. This is getting big. That's right. All right. All right. Thank, thank you, Chris. Another big scare, and we're going to have an update on that in the Valley. Despite rumors of a gas line break, reports from the state and the company that manages the gas line dispel it. We'll have more. Stay with us. For live, late-breaking, investigative news stories, visit kpho.com. The Valley's newest Chevy dealers got it all. Hundreds of new Chevys to choose from. Yeah, and easy to get to from anywhere. Just take the freeway to savings. And you'll also get real bargains, not a lot of hype. Hey, you just got to see Freeway Chevrolet, I-10 and Ray. Freeway, Freeway Chevrolet, I-10 and Ray. Jason Berry back live in the North Valley reporting on the gas shortage. That isn't no gas shortage at all. Just a few minutes ago, this gas station behind me was full of cars. Everybody lined up thinking there was a gas crisis. There is no gas crisis. There should be plenty of gas for you to fill up tomorrow morning. Reporting live in the North Valley, Jason Berry, CBS 5 News. Great news. How many ways can you say there is no gas <laughs> crisis, right? Thanks for joining us for CBS 5 News tonight. We are back tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. Have a great night. Closed captioning on CBS 5 News is brought to you by Rob and Stuckey.